Welcome to my new series, Twisted Eights. On today's episode, we will cover number seven's story, which features Dr. Walter Freeman, the man who supposedly cured mental illness by sticking an ice pick through his patient's eye. The lumbotomy, a procedure which was hailed by the New York Times as surgery of the soul, a groundbreaking medical procedure that promised hope to the most distressed mentally ill patients and their families. But what began as an operation of last resort soon became performed by some almost 50 state asylums, often with devastating results. Little more than a decade after his rise of fame, Dr. Walter Freeman, the neurologist who championed the procedure, was decreed as a moral monster, and lobotomy was to be labeled as one of the most barbaric mistakes of modern medicine. By 1949, the number of lobotomies performed in the United States using Freeman's method soared to 5,000 annually, up from just 150 in 1945. Before his death in 1972, Walter Freeman would go on to personally lobotomize more than 29,000 patients in 23 states, including 19 children under the age of 18. But as long-term studies on the after-effects of the operation began to emerge, many proponents of lobotomy began to abandon it. For many patients, the procedure resulted in a vegetative state, or reduced them to childlike mentality. It's fascinating to wonder why mainstream medicine would go along with Walter Freeman to perform a lobotomy. To perform the procedure, Dr. Walter Freeman lifted the patient's eyelid and inserted an ice pick-like instrument called a leucotome through a tear duct. A few taps with a surgical hammer breached the bone. Freeman took a position behind the patient's head, pushed the leucotome about an inch and a half into the frontal lobe of the patient's brain, and moved the sharp tip back and forth. Then he repeated the process with the other eye socket. This obviously severely damaged and disabled his patient's mental capacity and ability to thrive. In all, lumbotomies were used on 40,000 to 50,000 Americans between 1936 and the late 1950s. Freeman believed lobotomies worked because the procedure severed connections between the frontal lobes of the brain and the thalamus, thought to be the seat of human emotion, which the mentally ill apparently had in overabundance. In 1967, Freeman performed a lobotomy on one of his original patients in Berkeley, California. He severed a blood vessel and the patient died three days later. This effectively brought his career full circle. During the last five years of his life, he performed no more lobotomies. He died from cancer in 1972 at age 76. Although twisted in thinking, I do not believe that these procedures were done with true malice he obviously thought that he was truly helping, or perhaps he just wanted to create more malleable patients. We'll see. As we go further down the list, we will find and uncover doctors who clearly overstepped their authority for personal gain and amusement. Remember, if you find it seriously strange, hit the like button, and be sure to share this video with your friends. To check out last week's previous video, click here. By sharing and liking the video, you help bring much needed attention to my videos so that others are more likely to see them. Be sure to stay tuned for next week's video, which features Dr. Marcel Pitot.